Mr. President, every president since 1952 has signed a national declaration declaring a national day of prayer. It's a good bipartisan cooperation to be able to recognize people who pray, people who set aside time to be able to spend time with God, to be able to pray for the nation. Quite frankly, for us as a party, and for us as a body, and for us as a nation, it's a good thing to be able to do to be able to pause. This year, on May the 2nd, with the theme, Love One Another, we will again have a National Day of Prayer. It's not a requirement for Americans to pray. It's not a requirement of a person direction to pray, a certain method, a sudden location. It's just a call to the nation to say we have great needs as a country. As we watch the attacks on synagogues in our country, as we watch bombings of Christians in Sri Lanka, gun battles that have erupted in churches in the United States, mosques that have been attacked, people of faith being targeted simply because of their faith. It is a reasonable thing for us as a nation to be able to pause and say, how are we doing, as this year's theme says, loving one another? We as a nation have a long history of prayer. Hanging in the rotunda in this Capitol building is a painting called The Embarkation of the Pilgrims. That painting depicts the beginning of America. It has been hanging in that same spot in the rotunda since 1843. The painting is simply a group of people on the deck of a ship leaving out from Europe, huddled around an open Bible, praying. The painting was designed and was created just to depict how America began in the 1600s, around the deck of a ship, around an open Bible, praying. It is still something I would encourage Americans of faith to be able to stop and do, and it is still something that is one of the most humbling experience that I experience each time I have someone from my state of Oklahoma that catch me as someone did this morning and said, every day, my wife and I pray for you. Not a terrible thing to do as a nation, to be able to love and to be able to pray for each other and for the future direction of our country. So if I can model for the nation for just a moment in my own way, and encourage the nation on our national day of prayer to be able to pause and pray, I would simply say this, let us pray as a nation. Father, guide us. We need your help. The controversy, the division in our nation, the anger, the struggle. Help us to be able to love one another. Help us to be able to see each other as you have created us and to respect you, your wisdom and your guidance. Father, we admit that we do not know as much as you, so we need your help. We need your insight. For our first responders and our military scattered around this nation and around the world, we pray your protection for them. Pray that you would give them insight Help them to be able to represent us well. For members of our State Department, members in our government that are scattered around the earth, members of our intelligence community and others that serve us every day, God, would you guide them and would you protect them in the task and give them the insight they need. For federal employees that serve our nation each day, for members of our nation that we're finding ways to serve each other in our communities, would you help us this day to love one another and to be able to set the tone for a world that is watching us as a nation. Help us represent well you and who you've called us to be as individuals. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen.